Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please leave me a like down below, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this coming. If you didn't like this video, please leave me some comments down below. You can always looking for ideas to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another video by Kurt Skazat about the Kardashev scale. Now this is a concept that's based, you're rating civilizations based on how much energy they produce. Let's take a look. The observable universe is a big place that's been around for more than 13 billion years. Up to 2 trillion galaxies made up of something like 20,000 billion billion stars surround our home galaxy. In the Milky Way alone, scientists assume there are some 40 billion Earth-like planets in the habitable zone of their stars. When we look at these numbers, it's hard... Always fascinated by the massive scale of the universe and what's out there. ...to imagine that there is nobody else out there. It would change our perception of ourselves forever if we found others. Just knowing that this vast place is not dead would shift our perspective outwards and could help us get over our irrelevant quarrels. But before looking for our new best friends or worst enemies, we have a problem to solve. What are we actually looking for? In a universe that big and old, we have to assume that civilizations start millions of years apart from each other and develop it. Any of you ever played Stellaris? This is a bit how it st starts out where you got these like, little random blobs in the galaxy <laughs> and then they start interacting. <laughs> different directions and speeds. So not only are we looking over distances of dozens to hundreds of thousands of light years, we're looking for a civilization ranging from cavemen to super advanced. So we need a conceptual framework to enable us to think better thoughts that make us able to search better. Are there universal rules that intelligent species follow? Currently, our civilization sample size is only one, so we may make incorrect assumptions based solely on ourselves. Still, better than nothing. We know that humans started out with nothing but minds and hands that could build tools. We know that humans are curious, competitive, greedy for resources, and expansionist. The more of these qualities our ancestors had, the more successful they were in the civilization building game. Being one with nature is nice, but it's not the path to irrigation systems or gunpowder or cities. So it's reasonable to assume that aliens able to take over their home planet also have these qualities. And if aliens have to follow the same laws of physics, then there is a measurable metric for progress, energy use. Human progress can be measured very precisely by how much energy we extracted from our environment and how we made it usable to do things. We started with muscles until we learned to control fire. Then we made machines that used kinetic energy from water and wind. As our machines got better and our knowledge of materials expanded, we began to harness the concentrated energy from dead plants we dug up from the ground. As our energy consumption grew exponentially, so did the abilities of our civilization. Between 1800 and 2015, population size had increased sevenfold while humanity was consuming 25 times more energy. It's likely that this process will continue into the far future. Based on these facts, scientist Nikolai Kardashev developed a method of categorizing civilizations from cave dwellers to gods ruling over galaxies. The Kardashev scale, a method of ranking civilizations by their energy use. The scale... So it's by energy use. So in a way, you're penalized for being more energy efficient. Hmm been refined and expanded on over the decades, but in general it puts civilizations into four different categories. A type 1 civilization is able to use the available energy of their home planet. A type 2 civilization is able to use the available energy of their star and planetary system. A type 3 civilization is able to use the available energy of their galaxy. 
a Type IV civilization is able to use the available energy of multiple galaxies. So one's like a futuristic Earth, two's like Star Trek, three's like Star Wars, and I've actually never heard of four. That's interesting. These levels differ by orders of magnitude. It's like comparing an ant colony to a human metropolitan area. To ants, we are so complex and powerful, we might as well be gods. <laughs> so to make the scale more useful, we need subcategories. On the lower end of the spectrum, there are type 0 to type 1 civilizations. Anything from hunter-gatherers to something we could achieve in the next few hundred years. These might actually be abundant in the Milky Way. But a civilization that is not actively transmitting radio signals into space might be as close as our nearest stellar neighbor, the Alpha Centauri system, and we would have no way of realizing they exist. But even if they transmitted radio signals like we do, it might not be very helpful. I love the alien version of our technology. It's cool. Big mushroom communications dishes. <laughs> On an interstellar scale, humanity is practically invisible. Our signals may extend over an impressive 200 light years, but this is only a tiny fraction of the Milky Way. And even if someone were listening, after a few light years, our signals decay into noise, impossible to identify as the source of an intelligent species. Today, humanity ranks at about level 0.75. We have altered our planet. We've created huge structures, mined and stripped mountains, removed rainforests and drained swamps. We've created rivers and lakes and changed the composition and temperature of the atmosphere. If progress continues and we don't make Earth uninhabitable, we will become a full Type 1 civilization in the next few hundred years. Any civilization that becomes a Type 1 is bound to look outside because it's likely that it's still curious, competitive, greedy and expansionist. The next reasonable step towards transitioning to Type 2 is trying to alter and mine other planets and bodies. This might start with outposts in space, transition to infrastructure and industries near the home planet, move on to colonies, and end with terraforming other planets by changing their atmosphere, their rotation, or... Which is really cool to think about all this futuristic stuff, and... Though it does have this same assumption that we'll still be like that in the future, but considering we've been like this for essentially thousands and thousands of years, I think it's a safe assumption. As a civilization expands and uses more and more stuff and space, its energy consumption scales with them. So at some point, they may embark on the largest project a lower Type 2 civilization can take on, harnessing the energy of their star by building a Dyson Swarm. Once this megastructure is finished, energy has become pre- They did another video on this topic. It's a it's a pretty cool topic. <laughs> just the idea of, you know, it just makes sense building solar panels right next to the sun and use it. Because you get a lot much more energy when you're that much closer. The unlimited for molding the home system however they see fit. If they are still curious, competitive, greedy, and expansionist, and now have complete... For the home system, it's got nothing on Type 3, though. <laughs> control over their home system, stellar infrastructure in place, and the energy output of a star, the next frontier moves to other stars light years away. For a Type II civilization, the distance to other stars might feel like the distance between Earth and Pluto does to us today. Technically within reach, but only with immense investments in terms of time, ingenuity, and resources. This begins their transition towards... Okay, I take that back. It's, I guess, Star Wars. Uh, the Star Trek civilization is further along than Type 2. <laughs> 3. This step is so far beyond us that it becomes hard to imagine what exactly these challenges will look like and how they'll be solved. Will they be able to find a solution to the vast distances and travel times of hundreds or thousands of years? Will they be able to communicate and keep a shared culture and biology between colonies light years apart? Or will they split into separate Type 2 civilizations? Maybe even different species. Uh, they probably know aspects of physics that we know nothing about, like the ability to travel faster than light and have real-time communication with people throughout the galaxy. They're deadly challenges between the stars. So the closer a species gets to Type 3, the harder it becomes to fathom what it might actually <laughs> look like. They might discover new physics, may understand and control dark matter and energy, or be able to travel faster than light. 
I actually think Star Wars is probably the closest human-ish example to a Type 3 civilization based on... If you look at how powerful, say, the Death Star is, it's many, many more times more powerful than a star, and they're faster than light travel. So that's one way to visualize it concept as a concept, but yes, the physics is unknown, <laughs> to say the least. We might be unable to grasp their motives, technology, and actions. Humans are the ants, trying to understand the galactic metropolitan area. A high Type 2 civilization might already consider humanity too primitive to even talk to. A Type 3 civilization might feel about as like we feel about the bacteria living on the anthill. Maybe they wouldn't even consider us conscious or our survival relevant. We could only pray that they're nice gods. As they steal half the sun. But the scale doesn't necessarily end here. Some scientists suggest there might be Type 4 and Type 5 civilizations whose influence... Oh, well. That did give it an interesting point, though. It's We could actually be sitting in some territory of some vast uh, intergalactic empire or something, but they pay no more attention to us than we pay attention to some anthill in our front yard. <laughs> Meaning, once we get too big, they might just take us out. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Some stretches over galaxy clusters or superclusters, structures comprising thousands of galaxies and trillions of stars. Ultimately, there might be a type of Omega civilization, able to manipulate the entire universe and possibly others. Type Omega civilizations might be the actual creators of our hmm. universe for reasons beyond our comprehension. Maybe they were just bored. As flawed as this classification... <laughs> they serve it like pizzas, that's gotta be it. <laughs> ...maybe this thought experiment is already telling us interesting things. If our ideas about the nature... I've never heard of any of them beyond three. But that's, this is interesting. ...species that form interstellar civilizations is sort of correct, then we can be pretty sure that there are no civilizations of type three and beyond mm -hmm. near the Milky Way. Their influence would in all likelihood be so all-encompassing and their technology so far above our own. Speaking of Star Wars, they showed a little picture of an Imperial Star Destroyer. <laughs> that we couldn't miss them. The galaxy should flash with their activity in thousands of star systems. We should be able to see or detect their artifacts or movements between... Unless they're deliberately keeping it a secret using some aspect of physics that we have no idea how it exists. Hmm different parts of their empire. Even if a Type 3 civilization did exist in the past and died a mysterious death, we should be able to detect some of the remnants of their empire. But when scientists looked, they didn't find remnants of harvested stars, decaying megastructures, or scars of great interstellar wars. So they're very likely not out there and never were. In a sense, this is very sad, but also very reassuring. It leaves the galaxy to us and others similar to us. So the most promising civilizations to look for may be somewhere in the spectrum from type 1.5 to type 2.5. They wouldn't be too advanced to understand them and their motives. They may have finished their first megastructures and they might be in the process of moving stuff between stars and transmitting enormous amounts of information into space by accident or on purpose they would probably also look to the stars and look for others. Then again, maybe we've got it all wrong. Maybe progress to Type 2 does not mean expanding outwards, and humanity is still too immature to imagine otherwise. For now, all we... Re That's a very valid point. We just don't know yet. ...know is that we haven't seen anybody yet, but we've only just started looking. Until we finally find friendly super aliens and can ask them to explain the rules of the universe to us, most of us have to make do with learning stuff ourselves. <laughs> it's a nice segue into their sponsor portion of their video. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you think of this sort of concept down in the comments. Um, like I said, this is something I was fascinated by before, but I only heard of levels one through three. So this is some, uh, this is some really cool stuff. Um, yeah, even with uh, with nuclear power, that just gets us to uh, 0.75. Maybe with um, 
more advanced reactors of fu or fusion reactors uh, that might get us closer to a to a full one but we'll see about that <laughs> but I, I love these type of videos all this futuristic exciting stuff um, again let me know what you think in the comments thank you very much for watching I'll see you next time